All right, so if you've ever dreamed of exploring space, well, your dreams are getting closer to reality. Joining us now is NASA's chief scientist, Jim Green. Thank you so much for being here. What an incredible time period we live in. We've got space travel, the math and physics behind it. That's been your entire life. But the rest of us, we're just fortunate enough to watch it all. So from your vantage point, you've been at NASA for more than 41 years. Describe what it took and how it felt watching Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos successfully become newly minted astronauts. Indeed, you know, I've uh, seen the Apollo landings. I've been involved in many NASA missions. Uh, but this is incredibly special in, in terms of private companies having the ability to take citizens, you know, citizen astronauts into space, even if it's for a few minutes. It's really a tremendous start of a new era in space flight. And how do these trips now set the path? For future space travel for all of us, your everyday average American. Well, you know, I, am, I envision that perhaps uh, uh, the public observed what Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson did, much like what the public uh, observed uh, Charles Lindbergh crossing the Atlantic. You know, many people at that time would say, oh, we can cross the Atlantic. I'll just get in a boat. That takes, um, you know, uh, a week or so. Uh, whereas what Lindbergh did was the start of a revolution of flight, even though it was one engine, one man uh, across the Atlantic. And in a way, we're moving into that era in terms of a new method of flight, not only the sensation of going into orbit and being weightless and seeing the world from a beautiful perspective, an important perspective, you know, where you don't see boundaries, but you see the beautiful blue marble that we have today, just like the astronauts do on space station. It's a tremendous experience. But think about the future, the ability to go a little higher, a little faster, and get into orbit. At that altitude, it takes about 90 minutes to go around the world. And think about the opportunity that we may have in the future of being able to go from New York to Tokyo in 45 minutes, only through a trajectory that gets into orbit, comes down, and, and you're at your location. You know, so I think we're on the, on the verge of some really exciting commercial activities in space flight, and I hope everyone sees that future and embraces it. Yeah, really just so unbelievable. So I have to ask, where do things stand right now with NASA's own plans in terms of partnering up with the commercial space flight industry? Well, this is an extremely important era for NASA, working with the commercial groups that can get uh, astronauts and supplies to the International Space Station. You know, that used to be our responsibility, our sole responsibility. Now we rely on, on new, new companies to be able to do that. That's fantastic. It frees us up now to go beyond low Earth orbit, to go to the moon, to learn to live and work on a planetary surface. And the moon this next decade is the start of that. And I can envision us learning how to do that and then going on to Mars. So it's a new era from the perspective of NASA moving into the solar system for humans now to explore. So I have a science question. Bezos and his crewmates, they were able to enjoy three minutes of weightlessness. Why was it just three minutes? Well, first you've got to get up to a certain altitude that we call space, where weightlessness occurs. And that means you're pushed all the way up. This, this then means you have a certain amount of, of pressure that's on your body. We call that G-force. But once you get to the top of that trajectory and you're truly in space, everything slows down and we're waiting for the earth then to pull you back down. And that gives you that three minutes of weightlessness. And once again, if they went a little higher and a little faster, they actually could get into orbit. And then they would have 90 minutes of weightlessness, you know, which, which may be something that will happen in the future. Can't wait. Thank you so much again for your time. We learned so much. NASA's chief scientist, Jim Green, really appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you so much.